Baby Maverick, tiny and fighting for his life. Outside of the ICU, another battle is brewing, a custody battle. I'm here to get my baby, like I want my baby back. The mother wants her baby, so does the father, but an adoption agency says mom gave up her rights. She's a 17 year old girl, they exploited her. You know, they took advantage of her because they wanted her baby. Baby Maverick fighting for survival, the mother, father and adoption agency all fighting for custody. The Defenders, tonight at 11. All right, welcome back, everybody. Time now is 4.53, and premiere week kicks off this morning on Local 4 with the premiere of Megyn Kelly's all-new show called Megyn Kelly Today. Kelly's new show will air weekdays at 9 a.m. and becomes the third hour of the Today Show. And in today's premiere, the cast of NBC's Will and Grace will stop by to pre preview their return to TV. And then coming up at 6 a.m., our very own Kimberly Gill sits down with Megyn Kelly in New York City to find out why Detroiters should watch her show. And today on Ellen, ahead of tomorrow's much anticipated premiere, a few of the members, the cast members of This Is Us, stop by to preview the season and speak about Mandy Moore's recent engagement. Has your fiance met your, your television husband? <laughs> yes. He's met the whole cast. And Everybody's yeah. very close. Everyone's significant others and whatnot. We're, we're like one big family. We really are. As yeah. cheesy and gross as that sounds, we all really love each other. <laughs> that's a really good thing. It, it is. is. Yeah, yeah, that's a really lucky thing. And you can catch the season premiere of This Is Us tomorrow night at 9 p.m. right here on Local 4. A lot of good TV watching going on this week. All right, everybody, coming up next, local stories from all across Metro Detroit. Plus, we are following breaking news. Our Nick Monticelli, they're live. He's going to update us on a story uh, out uh, about a deadly hit and run, Nick. And that's in Clinton Township, where police are still trying to figure out who hit and killed a woman trying to cross the street here at 16 and Gratiot on her bike. We'll give you those details next on Local 4 News today. All right, thank you, Nick. Well, right now we're taking a look at our maps this morning. Things looking good. However, those of you traveling towards I-275 a little bit later today, stick around. We want to let you know about some construction. I'll help you get around it coming up at 5 o'clock. Brandon. Some issues with Detroit Public Schools because of the heat, the eastern half of the country hanging on to summer. We are anticipating a noticeable change coming. Fall returns in your seven day. We'll break it all down next right here. Local 4 News today at 5 a.m. is next. Don't go away. We are. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Deadly hit and run, a woman run down while riding her bike. This morning, the hunt continues for the driver behind the wheel. Brandon? Summer continues, near record heat for the fourth day in a row. Man, oh man, it is hot. <laughs> this weather is amazing. It's just unbelievable just how hot it is. 90s is just. This late into September, too. You're going to need a, a church fan all morning. Uh, welcome to Monday, though, nonetheless. And uh, I think the weather is something that's going to help you get through the day, at least keep you in good spirits, well, right? Well, if you like the sunshine. But for yeah. some, if you don't have AC, it's yeah. gotten to the oppressive point with temperatures this hot. But we do want to get to the breaking news in just a moment. But the excessive heat is certainly a big story this morning. Yeah, in fact, it's forcing all Detroit Public Schools to close a little bit early, a half day for the Detroit Public Schools Community District. Now, dismissal time will vary based on each school's start time, so you'll definitely want to check with your child's school. All afternoon sports activities have also been canceled. The teachers union says that more than half of the district's schools do not have air conditioning, as we've been mentioning. So let's get over to Brandon and talk about our forecast for today and just how long the heat wave will last this week. Well, it's dangerous because it's been going on since late last week, you remember, and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Two out of three of those days either tied or broke records, and we're going to be close today. So it's the extension of the heat wave that really is dangerous on our bodies. Everybody needs to sort of take her easy today. 69 at Metro, 60 in Ann Arbor, 65 in our north zone, Pontiac, 63 Adrian. Some visibility issues, some fog in parts of Washtenaw, St. Clair, Monroe counties. So be careful with that. Temperatures are going to soar, though, from fog to hazy sun, 89 at noon or 84 at noon, 89 the high temperature. Record is 93, a close call, but should be just off. Any shower chances far north zone into the Saginaw Bay late afternoon, evening. You can see right now, Rhonda Everod, nothing happening outside here. 
Alrighty, Brandon, thank you. Time now, 5.01. I want to get back to that breaking news that we've been following for you this morning out of Clinton Township. Uh, a sad one at that. A woman killed during a hit and run crash. And it's a story that we first brought to you as a push alert right there to your phone. The woman was riding a bike at the time. Local force Nick Monticelli joins us now live. And Nick, talk us through what time of the night this happened and what police know so far. So Rhonda, this happened at exactly 10.07 last night at the intersection of 16 and Gratiot. And as far as we can tell, the woman was trying to cross Metro Parkway here in the crosswalk. Her bike and her, she actually landed about 20 or 30 yards away from this location. Let's show you some video to get you a better idea of exactly where all this was. Again, 10 o'clock last night, 16 and Gratiot here in Clinton Township. The woman is in her 40s. You'll be able to see that bike here in just a moment. Officers from Clinton Township sent here as fast as they could. Unfortunately, that woman died right here on the scene. And as you mentioned, this is a hit and run accident. So whoever did this hit her and then took off without even trying to help her at all. And that is what's unfortunate about this. Now, here's the good news. If there is any good news, 16 and Gratiot is a very busy intersection. A lot of businesses this, uh, at this spot. CVS, a gas station. Uh, McLaren has a medical office building on the southwest corner of the intersection, the southeast, I should say. So there is a lot or are a lot of cameras in this area that would necessarily not necessarily have picked up the actual accident, but they certainly can keep an eye on all the traffic going through here. So police, as you see in this video, spent a lot of time gathering a lot of evidence, maybe paint marks off of the bike or pieces of the vehicle that were left behind after hitting this woman. It won't take much to figure out exactly who did this. So my advice is if it's you, you should probably turn yourself in. That is much better for you than having the police track you down. On the flip side of things, if you were around this intersection, Metro Parkway, also known as 16, and Grash at 10 o'clock last night, 10.07 last night, and you saw what happened here, please call the Clinton Township Police Department. We are live here in Clinton Township, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All righty, we know police are going to continue to investigate this all morning long. Nick, thank you. Let's turn things over to traffic anchor Kim DiGiulio uh, to help us get around all this while the investigation continues. All right, well, we just want to let you know that that is open now, so just keep that in mind for your morning commute. But let's take a look at the big picture here. You can see that we've got a lot of green on our maps. I just want to show you what your freeways look like over on I-96, right at Farmington Road. Things looking great here. Nothing you need to worry about. We have very light traffic volumes in this area. Conditions are also looking great. We have dry roads to start off the day. But we've got to talk about some construction over on I-275. I'll tell you about that coming up at 514. Back to you. Thank you. It is a story that gives new meaning to the term political football and games across the country on Sunday. NFL players protesting comments made by President Donald Trump about the national anthem protests. And here at Ford Field yesterday, a Detroit artist who sang the national anthem knelt on the final line and says that this went too far by the NFL and when it happened it was a spur of the moment decision by the singer there has been both support and criticism online after the game respect this beautiful country that we live in I respect the people of this country and this was my support as Rico Lavelle belted out the last line of the anthem and the home of the As little boys waving flags on the field looked on, the Detroit artist pumped his fist in the air. LaBelle said he'd been thinking about taking a stand for a while, but it was one specific comment from the president that forced him to act. President Trump called our players SOBs. You know, some of the greatest athletes. It just wasn't it for me. When it came to the controversy nationwide, the Lions fans and military veterans supported the demonstrations. I definitely get it, but at the same time, all that's important. Those are our, our amendment rights, and you exercise them peacefully. This couple had mixed feelings. I think everybody should be patriotic and, and stand. I was okay with it. Um, I mean, patriotic, of course, but I, uh, at the same time, it's, 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 it's a platform for them to, to say what they want to say. Lavelle says afterwards, several Lions players voiced their support, and for those who criticized him, the singer hopes this encourages a dialogue. For people 
that have some type of anger towards what I did today, I hope they got that same type of anger towards injustice. Much more on the anthem controversy during our six o'clock hour, including reaction from players as far as what happened on the field on the field demonstration. It all came down to the final play of the game and it was a heartbreaker. Lions with the ball 12 seconds left. Stafford throws what looks like a touchdown ruled a touchdown. But after a review, the call is reversed because Golden Tate was down before the goal line. There were eight seconds left on the clock when that play ended, but because of what's known as the runoff rule, the reversed call meant 10 seconds was taken off of the clock, and that meant the game was over. That's it. Heartbreaker for all the fans who watched this exciting game. Final score, 26-30, and the win goes to Atlanta. To make matters worse, what happened outside the Lions locker room, look at this, it forced the whole area to be evacuated. We'll explain more on what happened here a little later this morning. Four people are recovering this morning after a driver makes a critical mistake on Belle Isle and they're injured. M police saying that the driver was trying to leave but accidentally put the car in drive instead of reverse, slamming that vehicle into a small crowd, again injuring four people, which included a toddler and an elderly woman. Thankfully, none of those four were seriously hurt, but all the victims were taken to the hospital as a precaution. I've never seen nothing like this happen. This is a family fun day. Everybody was out here having a great time. Music playing, a nine-year-old boy's birthday party. And they just came and, and traumatized everybody. Well, the driver was cited for reckless driving and later released. Another woman was arrested for disorderly conduct. As many in Puerto Rico are struggling to recover from Hurricane Maria, hundreds are trying to leave the island altogether. The terminal at San Juan's airport was packed as people were just there trying to get out. Two airlines, American and JetBlue, are flying to the U.S. mainland, but reservations and ticketing in a country with limited power and down cell phone service is a difficult task for many, as you can imagine. So uh, our thoughts are with everyone recovering there. I have a friend uh, who actually finally had a chance to speak to her parents on FaceTime, so I was able to find out that her parents were okay, and it was Thank just goodness. an emotional yes. moment for her, you know, because uh, she'd been worried this whole time. Yeah, that power outage just looks like it's going to be months before it gets back on there. Time now is 5.08, and I had this morning shots fired at a church, and we are learning that the gunman in this deadly attack may not have been a stranger to churchgoers. Also, a restaurant customer going for a quick bite is bitten by a snake as a business. Wow, okay, and we're talking about travel ban 2.0. President Trump putting in new restrictions. And it's the 25th day of September. We have birthdays to wish. Our Sunshine Awards are going out to Blake Barzart, turning two today. Prince Gordon is two. Hannah Brooks turns four. Gabrielle Davis, happy 14th birthday to you. Shayla Allen turns 23. And Tracy Boyd is 35 today. And a happy birthday going out to Philip uh, Toko is turning 57 today. Sherry Davenport, happy 54th birthday to you. Sandra Manis is 59. Curtis Jennings is 61. So is Daniel Parsons. And Darlene Hudson turning 62 today. Also celebrating today, Willie Williams turned 79. Corliss Darnell, happy birthday to you. And a huge happy birthday to my boyfriend, Jason Drumheller. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Joe Lynn Harper, Claudia Williams, and Victor Wright also celebrating birthdays today. And a happy anniversary going out to Jason and Shakira Benning, celebrating eight years together. Kevin and Heather Kruger's 13 years together for them. Wes and Francis Parker, happy 35th or, uh, anniversary to you. And take a look. Yes, we have another special birthday to wish today. A member of our local four family, the lovely Sandra Ali. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Sandra. Right now, it's welcome back. It is 513. President Trump has signed a new proclamation placing new restrictions on entry into the US. The new rules go into effect on October 18th and will impact citizens in eight countries, including Iran, North Korea, Syria and Venezuela. The restrictions range from full travel bans on some countries to visa restrictions in others. The announcement comes just as president's, the president's temporary ban is set to expire. 
Republican senators leading the fight to repeal and replace Obamacare insist that their bill has a shot at getting passed this week. Just three GOP no votes would doom the bill because every Democrat in the Senate opposes it. So far, Senators Rand Paul and John McCain have voiced their intention to vote against the bill. And experts say Senator Susan Collins may also vote against the bill. The primary reason McCain and Paul referenced is in their dissent, deep cuts to Medicaid and limits on pre-existing condition coverage. It is 514 everybody look at the temperature it is almost 70 degrees in some places at five o'clock in yes, the morning and we have seen record breaking high temperatures for the last few days around here Brandon we any have. signs of relief yes uh, six weeks from now no we've a few more days of this and by Thursday a noticeable difference but stay tuned that seven day just a couple of minutes away here and we'll show you what is happening 69 degrees out there average high temperature for this uh, late September early October numbers should be near 70 and that's where we are to start the day that live look in Mount Clemens. Good morning, Macomb County. 69 degrees at 8 a.m. Some patchy fog out there, fog or haze through the 8, 9 o'clock hours. Noontime, 84. 89 will feel like 93 today, but the actual air temperature record at Metro Airport in Detroit is 93. So I think we're just shy of it, even though it feels every bit of the 90s later on today. Stifling heat, we need to make sure we're not doing too much outside. Staying hot hydrated, doing all the right things because this is like the fourth day in a row plus, so it can have an impact. Uh, fog right now down in Monroe County, a third of a mile visibility, also up in parts of St. Clair County, in and around uh, areas of Port Huron. A mile and a half visibility out in Ann Arbor. We're also seeing a little fog developing in parts of central Washtenaw, where temperatures are just a little bit cooler. Don't have a whole lot going on here locally, satellite and radar wise. This is uh, Marie way out here off of the Carolinas, category one storm there. This cold front though is going to come through here Tuesday night into Wednesday. Dry, should be dry, but it'll be a steering mechanism across the eastern United States and push Maria and Lee to Category 1 storms farther out to sea. So uh, Maria will be a nuisance with some riptides and some storm surge in the Carolinas maybe the next two days, but that's as close as it gets. Today and tomorrow here around Metro Detroit, upper 80s to near 90, feeling even warmer than that. But again, Tuesday night into Wednesday, a dry cold front. So that drops us to 80 on Wednesday, still well above average, but a noticeable difference. Wednesday into Thursday, our numbers drop into the upper 60s and near 70 degrees, and that will feel very nice as we get through the weekend. We do have a shower chance Friday afternoon. I believe Go Blue is off this weekend, so Sparty, a four o'clock afternoon game on Saturday at home. All right, well, it looks like those temperatures are going to be just like what we expect for a late September game to come this weekend. But still dealing with those hot temperatures right now, as Brandon said, lots of water today. But let's take a look at your commute right now. We are looking good out there. We've got green on our map, so let's zoom into some construction to talk about over on Van Dyke. This is on the northbound lanes just past 15 mile here. One lane block from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. So maybe see a little bit of a slowdown in that area. Also, southbound I-275 right at Van Born will have some construction there. That will have one lane block from 9 to 3. Eastbound I-696, we'll see those orange barrels as well between Mound and Van Dyke. Two lanes are going to be blocked there for an hour today between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. So if you're out running errands during that time, you may see a slowdown there as well. We also want to take a look at your I-75 commute that's coming up in my next report at 524. But right now, I'll send it to Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. In Tennessee, a gunman opens fire at a church near Nashville, killing one person and injuring seven others. Now, this all unfolded on Sunday morning at the Burnett Chapel Church of Christ in Antioch. The church usher confronted the gunman, identified as Emmanuel Sampson during the attack. The two struggled and Sampson shot the usher. Sampson was taken to the hospital for gunshot wounds and is now in police custody. Witnesses say that the gunman never said a word before shooting, but some members did say he had visited the church within the past year. The FBI and ATF are investigating. Well, the guy came from the right side of the church and he was just shooting. 
He was just shooting. He came right to the middle and shoot more. He don't talk. He don't talk. He just keep holding the hand like, like the gun like this and, you know, like moving like this. Church members tell police that the gunman attended the church one to two times two years ago. The man wrongly convicted of murder as a teen is recovering now after being shot on Detroit's east side. Devante Sanford was shot in the back of the leg Saturday morning at the Martin Luther King Apartments on Shane near East Lafayette. Last summer, a judge set him free after nearly a decade in prison, and he'd been living at the apartments with his girlfriend. Police saying that Sanford is expected to be okay, but we're told that he's not cooperating with the investigation. Time now is 519, and millennials are not the only ones having fun. New this morning, what baby boomers are doing more than anyone else. We'll have details on that, and maybe this guy was really just really, really late for work. Yeah. Next, we've got the story behind this crazy and dangerous idea. Secrets to Good Monday morning. Welcome back to Local 4 News today. Sitting at 69 degrees, some patchy fog around the metro Detroit area like central Washtenaw, St. Clair, and Monroe counties. But as we go through the day, another warm and steamy one. 84 by noon, 89 feeling like the low 90s because it will be muggy. The record is 93, Kim, so I think we're going to fall short of that today. Yeah, that's a hot one. All right, well, here is a look at your commute this morning through Auburn Hills. I-75 right at Jocelyn Road. Traffic volumes are starting to build a little bit, but nothing that's going to slow you down. And conditions looking fantastic for your morning mon Monday morning drive. All right, Kim, thank you. So we have some crazy video to show you. It's something right out of an action film. A man in Australia is caught on camera clinging to the back of a moving train. Yeah, so take a look at this. Someone riding on a highway near the tracks recorded this pretty daring stunt. He was holding on to the windshield wiper as the train sped down the tracks going eight, 68 miles an hour. The daredevil is 23 years old. Yep, he was arrested at the train's next stop. He was lucky it was just arrested and he didn't fall off. I know, hanging onto the windshield wipers. What Not happened if they would have turned them on? Right. And then he would have lost his grip. You exactly. Know? Could I don't have been think very about bad. That. No. Time now is 5:24. Everybody, and noon our next half hour, the high school football rivalry that went way too far. Yeah. This morning, both schools are launching investigations. We'll have details on that. Plus, the fire at Ford Field after the Lions game. Uh, that story coming up as well. Also, Nick Monticelli working on breaking news this morning from Clinton Township. Evra, we continue to follow the developments here. Whether or not police will be able to track down quickly the person who hit and killed a woman in her 40s just riding her bike at 16 in Gratiot. We'll give you all the details next on Local 4 News today. This week, Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. The search is on this morning for the driver involved in a hit and run crash. The victim was a woman riding a bike. And trying to beat the heat, Detroit Public Schools will be shutting down classes early across the district because the temperatures are expected to soar near 90 again. Man, oh man. Good Monday morning, everybody. We're going to uh, have a live update on that hit and run breaking news that we're following in just a moment. But first, we do want to start uh, with a reminder to all Detroit Public School families. Today will only be a half day for you because of the intense heat. Yes, and this decision was made because most buildings don't have air conditioning. If parents have not been contacted, they should call their child's school because dismissal times will be based on what time school normally starts. So it could be different for different schools. All afternoon sports activities have also been canceled because temperatures are expected to reach close to 90 degrees, Brandon, after we saw record breaking temperatures over the weekend. Yeah, some of those classrooms could be absolute steam baths and you think about the kids that have been running around all weekend. It's sort of that elongated problem with the heat and humidity. It is still out there stifling heat, especially considering what time of year this is. It is Fairly unusual to get a stretch this long, this warm. 69 in our metro zone right now at Metro Airport. Howell out west, 65. Good morning. Lapeer at 60 degrees, Monroe at 66. We are on our way to about 89 degrees the first Monday of fall, and it feels every bit of summer still. Record high is 93, so it looks like we fall just shy of it, but two out of the last three days of either tied or broken records, so it's 
continued warmth and humidity. It's going to feel like the 90s for sure. And some of that humidity creating some fog out there this morning. A third of a mile visibility down in Monroe County. Also parts of Washtenaw County and up in St. Clair County. So watch out for the fog this morning and prepare for the heat this afternoon. Everod and Rhonda. Alrighty, Brandon, thank you at 530. Now we want to get to breaking news that we have been following for you all morning out of Clinton Township. A woman riding her bike is hit and sadly killed. Yes, and now the search is on for the driver responsible who left the scene. Local Force Nick Monticelli joins us now live along Metro Parkway. And are there cameras in the area? Is there any description of the vehicle that police are looking for, Nick? Mm -hmm. No official description just yet. They're hoping to get something put together sometime this morning. There are cameras in the area, mainly because 16 and Gratiot is a very busy intersection. There are a lot of businesses here, so there will be some cameras that hopefully saw something. So this is a this is the eastbound lanes of Metro Parkway here at Gratiot. If we pan the camera off to the right here, you can see pretty close to the north side of the eastbound lanes, right about where that lane merge sign is, lane closing sign is. That's where this person was left for dead. We can also show you some video. This accident happened at about 10 o'clock this uh, last night. Actually, 10.07 is when the 911 call came into the Clinton Township Police Department. And a woman was on her bike, her bicycle, trying to cross 16 Mile Road here when she was hit. It's a pretty small bike. There was a lot of damage to that bike. And unfortunately, that woman was killed. And not just killed, but left here for dead. Nobody stopped to help her, specifically the person that hit her. Now, there were a lot of uh, police technicians out here, evidence technicians looking for anything they could find. In fact, in that video, you saw there were evidence markers scattered all over Metro Parkway as they were picking up little bits and pieces between the bike and hopefully the vehicle that hit her. They'd literally like to be able to track that person down. And it's going to take some work, but they should be able to do it. Here you can see that bicycle being loaded onto the flatbed. They do that so they can maintain the evidence and try to collect things off of that as well. So as we come back out here live, there's there are cameras out here. There is evidence that has been collected. So if you were the driver that did this, it's best just to turn yourself in at this point because they, as they, as they have said, will find you. We're live here in Clinton Township, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. All right, Nick, thank you. Meanwhile, a family has lost a loved one, so our hearts certainly go out to them. For the very latest on this throughout the morning, we will continue to keep our website updated at clickondetroit.com. All right, let's get a check of your traffic as you head out this morning, a morning commute. Here's Kim DiGiulio. All right, good morning, everyone. We are taking a look at your commute as you head out the door this morning. And if you take a look at the big picture here, we are looking fantastic. But we want to take a look at some construction that could slow you down a little bit later today over on M14. We're talking about both directions here between I-275 and Godfordson. One lane block. This starts at 7 a.m. and it's going to continue until 7 p.m. tonight. So that could affect your evening commute as well. So keep that one in mind. Also on M59, the east and westbound lanes will have construction as well between Crooks and Opdyke Road. Only one lane open there. This starts tonight, though, so it won't affect your morning or evening commute. Starts at 9 p.m. wrapping up tomorrow at 5 a.m. And this is going to continue uh, for the rest of the week, wrapping up on 5, 5 a.m. on Friday morning. We also have more construction to talk about over on I-75. I'll tell you all about that in my next report at 544. Back to you. Alrighty, Kim, we'll check back in with you. It is 533 now. And the man charged in that high-speed chase that weaved through Detroit, he's heading back to court today. He's 22-year-old Deron Sherard, and he's facing a long list of charges. Police chased Sherard through Detroit after he was suspected of shooting a woman in the head, and she later died. Sherard has not been charged in that shooting just yet. And a man is in the hospital this morning after an apartment fire in Pontiac. This happening around 10 p.m. Saturday night. The man suffered burns to his body. He's now in critical condition. A community on edge after a man attacks a woman in Farmington. Take a good look at this sketch. This is the man that police are looking for. Investigators say that he approached the woman as she was walking to her apartment complex at the Jamestown Apartments right there on Grand River on Friday night. He allegedly approached the woman and asked for a cigarette. He then grabbed her and tried to cover her mouth and assaulted her. The victim fought back and the man ran from the scene. He's described as heavy set. His height approximately 5'8 to 5'11 and he may be driving a dark colored compact sedan. 
Two Fort Worth, Texas officers are recovering after their cruiser crashed during a pursuit. That high speed pursuit on the highway started on Sunday afternoon. Eventually, a, a police cruiser occupied by two officers crashed near an exit ramp. The officers were trapped in the vehicle and they even had to be extricated by the fire department. They were taken to local hospitals. Thankfully, they're expected to recover and that suspect was arrested a little time after that. Now to Little Rock, Arkansas, where nine black students honored on Sunday on the 60th anniversary of the day they integrated an in Arkansas high school. On September 25th, 1957, the students who became known as the Little Rock Nine entered formally uh, a formerly all white central high school under a military escort. This came three weeks after the governor ordered National Guard troops to surround the school to prevent integration. That day is seen as a massive step forward in our country's history. But very, uh, very shocking to look back at that video and realize that how times have changed. How far we've come, for yeah. sure, yeah. 535 is your time and there is big news this morning. Something that didn't happen over the weekend. Luckily for all of us, the expert was wrong, but we are not out of the woods just yet. And today, today's show host, Megan Kelly, ready to give birth this morning? We'll let her explain what that's all about coming up next. Also ahead in the carport at six, the president versus the players. Whose side are you on? We'll hear from members of the Detroit Lions and local four viewers this morning about the weekend's protests over President Trump's comments and the national anthem. And up next, bitten at a popular restaurant, a woman rushed to the hospital after being bitten by a snake. If you're looking for. All right, welcome back everybody. Some stunning security camera video shows a burglary suspect breaking into an ambulance. Police say that paramedics were responding to a medical call when a man went into that ambulance. He got away with several items, including a Microsoft tablet, a stethoscope, and even a paramedic's wallet, which had a bank card, a driver's license, and even a social security card inside. Police are continuing to look for this man. And time now is 540. A Virginia woman is recovering after being bitten by a snake right inside of a restaurant. A copperhead snake bit her three times as she entered a Longhorn Steakhouse near Richmond, Virginia earlier this month. As she walked toward a second set of doors inside of the restaurant, she felt something sting her foot. By the time she realized what bit her, the snake bit her two more times. She says the pain was excruciating. Reached down and grabbed my foot because of the amount of pain and under my fingers felt it wiggle. It was horrible, the itching was uncontrollable. I'm doing nothing now, like I can't do anything. Like I can't stay awake to take a phone call with you. Just unbelievable. Longhorn Steakhouse says that in a statement, the incident is highly unusual. It's still looking into how it happened and taking steps to prevent it from repeating. I don't even know if you really can. Exactly. You know, it's oh. just like a snake decides where it wants to go. Mm. And unfortunately, it was right in front of that Awful. restaurant. Fleek accident. Ouch. Time now is 541. And time now for a reminder about some must-see TV right here on Local 4. The Megan Kelly Show premieres at 9 o'clock this morning. And if fans thought that the wait was long, Megan is talking about the build-up to today. Kind of like a, a pregnancy. <laughs> Take a listen to this. Finally, finally we're going to give birth to this baby. We're actually going to have the entire cast of Will and Grace, which is coming back, yay, to NBC, and uh, the show creators as well. You know, they broke a lot of barriers on that show. We're going to talk to them about some of that and what we can expect as they relaunch. Uh, in addition to some surprises, we got some surprises up our sleeves for day one. Yes. So we hope we'll, you'll tune in, sample us, see what we got to offer, you know, give us a look. And uh, see how I do, because it's going to be a live studio audience here. And I, I'm not used to that. I, th I think I'm going to be fine, but you never know. Well, we all will be watching. Megan also sat down for a one-on-one -on -one interview with our very own Kimberly Gill in New York. Ahead this morning in our next hour at 640, the one thing that Megan hopes to accomplish with the show and why Metro Detroiters will want to tune in this morning. Megan Kelly today, all about Megan. Looking forward to it. All right, so talk about procrastination. A book borrowed during the Great Depression. <laughs> you might remember when that was. Well, it has finally been returned to a Massachusetts public library. Yes, and this public library shared on Facebook last week that a copy of The Young Lady at Home by T.S. author Arthur was returned to them last week. It was supposed to be returned all the way back in 1938, nearly 80 years ago. Now, luckily for the man who returned the book, the library will not be collecting late fees. Ten cents uh, a daily rate after the first month, coupled with 80 years of inflation. That would have totaled more than a thousand. A hundred thousand dollars? 
Wow. Over 80 years of fees, or nearly anyway. Could you imagine what they could do with all that money? <laughs> Did you guys ever do that, though, as kids, where you, you were late to the maybe movie return or... All the time. Return? Yeah. And then if you didn't rewind it, you got an extra fee? Yes. At Blockbuster? I just always thought, though, especially with the book thing, I mean, 100000 bucks. how about I give you $16 for the book? <laughs> Maybe another five for, you know, not having it for a little while, but you know, interesting how that accumulates. Good Monday morning, everybody. Here we go. Sunrise time for us this morning, 724 a.m. The sun sets at 725 p.m. So our days are getting shorter. That sun angle is getting lower and still we are on track for near record heat today. Just a sign of how scorching it is here across the center and eastern parts of our country. Very cool out west and we have to wait a few more days for that. 69 degrees right now at Metro Airport, 64 at Howell in our west zone. Lapeer at 59, one of our cool spots. Monroe in the middle 60s. And we do have some patchy fog in some areas and hazy conditions elsewhere. Again, the first full week of fall, very much like summer. 84 degrees at noontime, 89 will feel like low 90s, but actual air temperature record at Metro Airport is 93. And we probably just come just short of that through this afternoon. It's going to be a close call. Yesterday we tied the record. Saturday we broke a record highs and today it's going to be close. Half a mile visibility is all we see down in Monroe County. So anybody driving south on I-75, be careful down here getting reports all over parts of Monroe County as well. Washtenaw County as you drive uh, M14 or maybe 94 US 23. These areas through Washtenaw County a little soupy and as you approach Port Huron, either from I-69 or I-94, also seeing some spotty or patchy fog around. As we look at the big picture of the satellite and radar, we have a look at really not a whole lot of activity. Cold front, yeah, that is snow still in parts of Wyoming and Montana, but rain right behind it through the Plain States. And this front will come through tomorrow night, early Wednesday dry. It will be a steering mechanism though for Maria, which is still a category one storm today and tomorrow plaguing the coastal Carolinas here with storm surge, rip tides, that kind of thing, but staying just offshore again, category one Maria. We also have Lee behind this one, another category one 80 mile an hour winds from Maria as it moves uh, north pretty slowly again just bringing that nuisance activity to the mid-atlantic states today and tomorrow and then on wednesday again we have our cold front coming through and look how that sort of pushes maria farther to the east and it goes right in between the u.s the coastal united states here and bermuda with a closer call to the carolinas today and tomorrow but wednesday that cold front here drops our temperatures about 10 degrees. We are near 90 today and tomorrow. Still muggy Wednesday, less humidity and 80 should be a decent day. But Thursday, how about 69 for a high temp that will feel much more like fall, obviously. And as we head into the weekend, temperatures staying on the cooler side as chance for a couple of showers Friday afternoon. The weekend right now does look dry. And here is Kim with your four live traffic. Good Monday morning. Good Monday morning to you as well, Brandon. Well, speaking of dry, that is what we're dealing with right now on our roads. So that is always a good way to start the week. And you can see here that we do look good. No accidents to report right now. So we'll talk about some construction. We've got lots of it over on the southbound side of I-75 between I-696 and 8 Mile. Expect one lane block there from 9 to 5. This will be happening daily throughout the week, wrapping up on Friday. Northbound I-75 between Rochester Road and Waddles will have one lane block from 9 to 3. Also happening throughout the week and we've got to talk about some more construction over on westbound I-94 between I-75 and the lodge expect one lane block there 9 to 3 happening for the week as well and then east and westbound I-96 from Novi Road to I-275 only one lane open there this is a nightly project 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. this one also finishing on Friday morning at 5 a.m. over to you. Thank you, Kim. It is 548 now. Let's get to some stories that you might have missed. Uh, it was a rough ending over uh, at Ford Field and 
And then to make matters worse, there's this whole fire that erupted right after the game outside of the Lions locker room. Yeah, take a look at the smoke captured by 97.1. The ticket reporter recorded some food catching on fire right there inside of a food warmer. The fire sent smoke through the entire tunnel at Ford Field, uh, even right near the Lions locker room. No one was hurt and there was no significant damage outside of that warmer, which burns significantly. But that worker seemed pretty calm, pretty calm knowing that that whole thing was like yeah, on fire yeah. inside. But glad um, that nobody was hurt. Yeah, kind of the rage we all felt though. Yeah. The whole <laughs> NFL rule we had to learn at the Lions expense right. yesterday and just the way the whole thing ended. It was pretty upsetting. Yeah. Uh, so Henry Ford's secret experimental room at the historic Paquette plant was open to visitors for the first time in more than 100 years. There it is, the room where Ford first conceived the Model T back in 1908. Until Sunday, only a handful of people have ever been inside. The exhibit's grand opening included free Model T rides, as you see here, a car show, and free admission to the plant on a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. Absolutely. Well, as you're waking up this morning, you, you can't help but notice that we're all still here, right? The world did not end as at least one person expected it to on Saturday. Yeah, the man who predicted this catastrophe says he simply got the date wrong. Right. A little date mix up. Last week, doomsday theorist David Mead made headlines for his prediction that Earth would collide with a planet X this Saturday, this past Saturday. On Sunday, when planet X was nowhere to be found in the atmosphere, Mead said seven years of war and disaster will begin on October 21st. So he's still trying to remain relevant by just giving us New dates. Either way, just get right with the man upstairs or whoever you believe in. And, <laughs> so you're prepared. And, and you'll be all ready. You'll be good to go. <laughs> Uh, today on Ellen, ahead of the much anticipated premiere and virtual viewing party for This Is Us, a few of the cast members are going to sit down for a little couch talk. Yes, and at one point, Ellen will let the audience ask the questions. Here's a preview. Congratulations, Sterling. Yes. I'm a huge fan of the show. Milo, my question's for you. Okay. We got to see your button season one. Are we going to get to see more of your button season two? Maybe a little something more? Um, I feel like that's as, as uh, I, I get asked that as much as it, how did Jack die? <laughs> <laughs> um, she had one question, and Both that is what she chose to questions. ask. <laughs> it was cute. Okay. It was a cute moment. Well, if you want to see Milo and his butt and all that good <laughs> other stuff, just stay determined, I guess, and uh, you can see what's going to be happening when This Is Us premieres. You only have one more day to wait for that season premiere of This Is Us. It's tomorrow night at 9 right here on Local 4. One Highly question. anticipated. I'm very shocked at her question. <laughs> All right, so after the break, two schools launch investigations after a football rivalry goes way too far on and off the field. And boomers have millennials beat on this one. Oh. I'll tell you what it is. Not using an iPhone. May not necessarily be the best thing. Oh. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> we'll give you a 360 view on Live in the D. We'll take you for a spin. Isn't this exciting? Of course, look at that. I love coming to Detroit. Check out the show. At 10 on Local 4. The best thing. Welcome back to Local 4 News today on a Monday morning. It is warm. It is upper 60s for most of us. A little patchy fog. Watch out, especially in rural areas, but steamy and hot today. We're looking at 89 with a feels like number in the low 90s. Kim record high is 93 today. We're probably going to be just short. All right, well, you definitely are going to want to crank that AC early this morning on your way to work or wherever you're headed. But the good news is that the commute to wherever you are going is looking good. This is I-96 right at Beach Daily. Quiet out there, light traffic volumes to start off the day, accident free as well. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 5.55 now. And two Colorado high school football teams clashed on Friday night, and one of the schools is accused of using racial and sexist slurs. Denver Public School officials say that some players reported being tackled and taunted with racial slurs, and then several female students attending the game received sexist slurs thrown at them. And to top it all off, some of the students allegedly brought a Confederate flag. Laugh at us to throw racial slurs. Use my language, but they called her a 
and they called her mom. We did ask them to remove that flag, um, and they did. Um, and uh, I think, unfortunately, it set a tone of tension both on the field and off the field. These things, whether they happened um, or not, you need to know that they're unacceptable, and there's no place at World Central for those things. Now, no suspensions or expulsions have been issued, but the school officials do plan to meet with the students today. And now to a help me hank alert, and this one kind of interesting. So you might say it's a bad habit of bringing your phone to the dinner table. It's kind of becoming a generational problem, but not with the generation that you'd expect. All right, so here's the study and it has found that baby boomers are just as obsessed as millennials when it comes to using their smartphones all the time. On average, they spend 149 minutes on their phones per day. That's just 22 minutes less than millennials at 171 minutes per day. In fact, they're 19% more likely to share content on Facebook than any other generation. Grandparents are using them to FaceTime and video chat with their grandchildren. It keeps them feeling like they're a part of their family's lives. It certainly does. A T-Mobile survey geared towards boomers and their data plan needs also found that they want to be online a lot too. I would definitely agree with that. My mom uses her phone all the time. Oh, my mom Sometimes does too. She'll just literally, you'll be talking to her and she just pulls out the phone and starts taking pictures of you. <laughs> like, <laughs> what's going on? Got to capture the moment. Uh, yeah, every moment. <laughs> it is 5.57, everybody. Coming up all new at 6 o'clock, local stories for you from Farmington, Pontiac, and Detroit. Plus, they keep going down. Gas prices take a tumble for the second week in a row. We'll tell you by how much if you need to gas up this morning. And we are continuing to follow some very sad breaking news out of Clinton Township. The search is on for a driver that left a, a bicyclist for dead. We're going to have a live report for Nick Monticelli. They're live at the scene coming up. Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. In that breaking news, a driver on the run after hitting and killing a bicyclist. We are following this story for you this morning from Clinton Township on who police are looking for. Plus a show of solidarity, owners, coaches, and even players across the NFL united in protest against President Trump. It is another steam bath. The near record high, very summer-like weather continues, but there is for those of us who don't like the heat, some good news in the seven day. Oh, embrace it while it lasts because it will be over and we'll be into fall and winter and you'll be wishing for a hot summer day again. I need a church fan. That's, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Like, it's very air conditioned in here, but at some points I feel like the humidity is still finding a way to get yeah, in. Yeah, and in and out of the car. And if you don't have air conditioning, yeah. it's certainly impressive. And we are certainly seeing that play out in any school that doesn't have air conditioning, including a DPS. Yeah, we have an alert for parents uh, of students who do attend classes within the Detroit Public Schools Community District. All schools are going to be closing early today. The district announcing plans on Sunday, just yesterday, to dismiss classes early because of the extreme heat that they already had to go through on Friday. We do want to let you know dismissal times are going to vary based on each school's start time. So definitely check with your child's school. And in fact, the sports activities, all the practices that are planned this afternoon have all been canceled. Let's get over to Brandon with more on this record breaking heat wave. I just think it's a great idea because the kids have been running around all weekend and since Friday, we've been near record highs in the 90 degree range with humidity here to end the month of September and the first full week of fall ahead. 68 degrees right now. Visibility is six miles at Metro Airport. Warm and hazy at the bus stops this morning. Some patchy fog out there. 89 degrees this afternoon. The record is 93. I think we fall just short of that. As we did yesterday, we actually tied the record. Today we're just short. Uh, the hair cast, Kim DiGiulio, is not good with the heat and humidity. It's not necessarily bad. It's not going to be real windy or rainy, but the humidity is enough to keep it right on that bad fair line. Be careful driving through Washtenaw, Monroe and St. Clair counties where we have visibility at a third of a mile or less. Your four zone weather is available. If you're looking for that cool down, it is on its way. You can find your four zone seven day forecast. Find your neighborhood weather right there on the weather tab. Click on Detroit.com. Here's Kim now for live traffic 
any issues to start the work week? No, Brandon, despite the fact that we do have some visibility issues out there, we are looking good. Here is the map right now. You can see we've got a bunch of green out there. No red icons that are going to indicate that we have any accidents. Here's a look at the eastern side of our viewing area. I-94 right at Little Mac here. You can see that visibility is a little bit of an issue, so may want to give yourself a some extra time if this is part of your commute, but nothing that's really going to slow you down. Traffic volumes are really starting to build, but again, accident free. So that is great news. However, we have construction over on I-275. I'll tell you about that coming up in my next report at 614. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. Let's get back to the breaking news that we've been following since uh, last night, in fact, a woman hit and killed in Clinton Township, all while just riding her bike. In fact, it's a story we first broke, and you may have seen as you woke up on our ClickOnDetroit.com app. Local 4's Nick Monticelli has been following the story for us along Metro Parkway where the accident took place. And Nick, it sounds like police are hoping for some surveillance video from local business or those street cameras to help them out. That would certainly help them to at least give them an idea of what kind of vehicle they are looking for. The accident happened at about 10 o'clock last night here at the intersection of 16 and Gratiot, Metro Parkway and Gratiot in Clinton Township. Let's show you some video to give you a better idea of what the scene looked like. You can see all the police out here. They had Metro Parkway closed for about five hours between 10 o'clock and basically 4 a.m. this morning, so six hours, uh, I should say. And then they had that bicycle that they brought back over to one side of the scene, loaded it onto a tow truck, which you'll see here in just a moment. The woman was in her 40s, hit while she was apparently trying to cross Metro Parkway, but that's something the accident reconstruction team has yet to determine. As far as who did this, that is the big question. This, as we mentioned, is a hit and run accident. So whoever killed this woman in her 40s just took off and did not stop to help. The Clinton Township Police Department continues to investigate. As we said, they're looking at cameras. They will be looking at cameras. They're also looking at the evidence left behind. Some markings on the bike, hopefully evidence pieces left behind uh, by the vehicle that hit her. A lot of things to look at in the next couple of hours. They do have detectives already uh, notified. They will be working on this as soon as they can. As for other people that could help. This is key in an investigation like this. If you're around the intersection of Metro Parkway and Gratiot around 10 o'clock last night, you either saw the accident or saw a vehicle speeding out of here out of control because that tends to be what happens. Please call the Clinton Township Police Department. Even though you think you may have seen nothing and it could be insignificant, that could be the key to solving this case and finding out who hit this woman and left her for dead. We're well, live here in Clinton Township, Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. It's certainly sad. Thank you, Nick. In other news, it's what played out all weekend long in the headlines. President Donald Trump's comments suggesting that NFL players who kneel for the national anthem should be fired has been met with more protests around the league. In Jacksonville, multiple players kneeling during the anthem. And in Pittsburgh, only the coaches were on the sidelines for the anthem. The and team stayed there in the locker room. Yeah, you probably saw the images here in Detroit. Eight Lions did take a knee during the anthem. The entire team locked arms as a show of unity, along with owner Martha Ford and the head coach, who stood with them. That's, that's not what she represents. That's what not, not what we represent. And, you know, she came out. Unity, all is one. Caldwell asked us all to stand together and unite. And I was there for my brothers. I fight for my brothers. The president is a is a person that you know when the kid looks at them, one they they they, they should want to aspire to be the president. You know, and I can't say that I want my kids looking at that that type of behavior and saying, "Hey, Dad, I want to be like that." Well, as for the game itself, in true Lions fashion, it was a knuckle biter. <laughs> A nail biter, we should say, until the last quarter and that last play, actually. Yeah, actually, Knuckles is a good one because the nails were gone at that point. <laughs> um, Lions had the ball, 12 seconds left. Stafford doing what he does best, getting that touchdown throw on the third down. It's called a touchdown, but then after review, the call is reversed because Golden Tate's knee touched down. A player touched him before he could break the plane, that goal line. And here is where it gets complicated. There were eight seconds left on the clock for a fourth down, but because of the runoff rule, which we all learned about yesterday, if you didn't know, the reversed call means 10 seconds are immediately taken off the clock, which meant 
At that point, the game was over. Lions could not run another play. That's it. We're all heartbroken. The final score, 26 to 30. But a, a valiant effort by the Detroit Lions against a very good Atlanta Falcons team. So we should all be very proud of our players. Wow. All right. Well, speaking of football, let's send things over to our Monday morning quarterback, Jason Carr. Good morning. Guess who I have as the hookup on my fantasy teams, quarterback to wide receiver? Oh, uh, would it be Stafford and Golden Tate? Mm. So that would have helped. On top of the heartbreak, <laughs> I'm like, no! The winners, the losers, the surprises from week three of the NFL season. We're here to help your fantasy football hopes, although my own hopes aren't so hot. Everett, over to you. Oh, but first, take an action. What you should do if you're one of the millions impacted by the Equifax hack. Rob Maloney is going to explain that coming up next in his Money Monday report. Keep it here. Good Monday morning. Let's talk quickly about Equifax. There's a lot to cover. Now, Equifax is swamped, and this I know because I was affected by the Equifax problem, the hack, and I can't even get people on the phone. PR people aren't returning phone calls or even email. I signed up for the Trusted ID Premier. Nothing came in the mail, so what do you do? Well, the first thing you do is you do a fraud alert with all of the credit bureaus. Now, here's something you didn't know. There are now four credit unions, TransUnion, Equifax, Experian, and now Enovis. Belt and suspenders time for security. You can go for a freeze on your credit. But here's the thing about the freeze. It costs 30 to 40 bucks to do it with all three. And it stops thieves cold. But at the same time, if you need to get credit, it costs the same 30 to 40 dollars to unfreeze your credit. So there is a downfall there. And you got to do that a couple of days in advance. Don't do it on the day you want to say get a car loan or a mortgage. Finally, you can file a complaint with the attorney general's office. We have links to all of this information and help for you right there on ClickOnDetroit.com on the Maloney Money page. Local employee. NFL Week 3 nearly in the books, and as much as many of us hope, picking which fringe player to start in your fantasy league isn't getting any easier. Let's roll the tape. Something that should be a no-brainer is starting to be Tom Brady and any of his receivers with the Patriots as they stay productive, busy. Brandon Cooks, Chris Hogan, both scoring a pair of touchdowns for the Pats over the weekend. And it was a big day for the Jags as they clobbered the Ravens in London, thanks in large part to three receiving touchdowns from Mercedes Lewis. He only needed 62 yards to get the job done. If this tight end is on your bench, you should probably consider starting him from here on out or at least picking him up if he's out there on waivers. He's now likely the Jags' go-to receiver after they lost their top receiver earlier in the season. Now, on to another surprise as the Bears stun the Pittsburgh Steelers in overtime. And this guy right here had a big role. Jordan Howard had two TDs on the day, 164 total yards, and one touchdown was the game winner in overtime. Big day against a big team. Surprising Bears taking on Pittsburgh. And I feel bad for anyone banking on the Raiders offense and any of it, its players as they came out flat line against the Redskins last night. Amari Cooper, Michael Crabtree, and Marshawn Lynch were all shut down, and Derek Carr didn't do much either. Another bust in the week was uh, Browns running back Isaiah Crowell. The second round fantasy projection or pick had a high expectation for the weekend, for the season. After Sunday, those expectations have been tampered down a little bit. There's really no expectations anymore as he couldn't find the end zone against the Indianapolis Colts. In three games, he has no touchdowns and 114 yards rushing. Meanwhile, that leads us to our first surprise from Sunday. Brown's backup running back, Duke Johnson Jr., he was able to find the end zone. He also had more than 100 yards on the day. Though Crowell is the Browns' re uh, leading back, number one on the depth chart. Don't be surprised if Johnson Jr. gets more and more playing time. But remember, fantasy owners, start them at your own risk. These, after all, are the Browns. And the Jets, let's talk a little about New York Jets, J-E-T-S, Jets, 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 might not be as bad as everybody thought as they beat the Dolphins with a lot of the offense coming from Robbie Anderson. The wide receiver hauled in a 69-yard 69 uh, 69 touchdown pass uh, en route to 95 yards on the day. He also shared the most targets. 
All right. Brandon? We're looking at your uh, fantasy team over here. Big. Is that why you guys were snickering for the last two minutes? <laughs> well, Big mistake to have Kirk Cousins on your bench. I know. Well, the last week he went for 13 points. <laughs> yeah. He went for, well, was it 36? Something big. <laughs> kind of. 37 points. 37 points. Jason. He still, Jason still has a chance. Needs a big game. <laughs> so tonight. you're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> I am also losing, and I, I'm in the same league. I need uh, former Buckeye Zeke Elliott to have a big night tonight. Ooh. I don't know hard who's. Hard to root for a former Buckeye. I, it was hard to draft the guy. <laughs> Trust me. I like, I like how Kim rolls in. Like she's like, like all right, just complete right. five minutes of fantasy. But oh, 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 Jason, what were Jason. you thinking? Boy, so you could. Brandon's showing me all the stats here, so it's it's never easy, you know, with those bench points, who to start, who to not start. But uh, there have been some colossal disappointments uh, as far as you know, big time runners go. Where has Le'Veon Bell? Go green. Where has he been this year? He had an okay game yesterday, but him and uh, uh, what's the uh, the running back from Arizona, Johnson, have been you know sort of busts this year. One hurt, one sort of just average. Anyway, let's get it back to where we need to be here. Weather-wise, 60s out there, most locations. We do have 59 out in Port Huron, and here's a look at some fog that we are seeing. A third of a mile visibility right now as we look out in Washtenaw County here. You see the contour on here, that sort of haze over Washtenaw County, Monroe County, parts of St. Clair County showing us a third of a mile visibility or less. So we need to Plan for that as we're heading out. Also planning the day for another scorcher. Warm and humid. 84 degrees by noontime and 89 the afternoon high. Record is 93 air temperature. Our heat index will be about 93 with the heat and humidity, but just shy of a record. Yesterday we hit 89, which tied a record, and then 91 on Saturday broke the record. We were close on Friday, so it is a stretch of very warm days in a row here, and it could be very challenging on the body, so just make sure we're all taking it easy. Check in on the neighbors, and I know the DPS schools at least are letting kids out early today because of the stifling afternoon heat. It finally breaks down as we head into Wednesday and Thursday. This cold front should come through tomorrow night on the dry side. We were hoping for some rain, but right now 89 today, 89 tomorrow. Wednesday down to 80. Still about 10 degrees above average, but down and humidity should be starting to squeeze out of the area. By Thursday, we're really going to feel it. We have 69 degrees Thursday all the way through the weekend. Fall finally returns by the end of the week. Our Hanson's weather window this morning. Everything is going to be all right. Is that, is that Bob Marley or is that? No. Everything is gonna be all right. Rock Who sings that? I don't know. Who sings that one? Uh, it's a good song. One hit wonder. I do remember <laughs> that song. Yeah, but uh, sounds like a Bob Marley lyric in there as well. Your Hanson's weather window today. Good one. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. We're taking a look at your commute this morning. We've got no accidents to report right now, just um, some construction. So we'll start with this over on Van Dyke. We're talking about the northbound lanes just past 15 mile here. One lane blocked from nine to three, so you could see a bit of a slowdown there. Also, southbound I-275 right at Van Bourne. Expect one lane blocked there. This also happening during that same time, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Eastbound I-696 has some construction as well between Mound and Van Dyke. Two lanes blocked from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So just for an hour, expect a slowdown there. Now let's take a live check at our roads right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. We're looking down at your commute over on I-75 and things looking good here. Conditions are good in this area. This is right at 12 mile. Now just keep in mind that we are seeing some patchy fog in some area visibility. Not great. You can see that this is good, but again, just be careful of that if you do run into that on your morning drive. Over to you. All right, Kim. Thank you. In today's consumer headlines, just how much are airlines making off of all those sneaky fees? But first, another price drop at the pump. Maribel Aber joins us now live from NASDAQ. Good morning. Happy Monday. Hey, 
Good morning, Rondo. Here we go. Gas prices are down in Michigan. The statewide average is $2.42 a gallon, down about 12 cents from last week, but that's more than the 23% higher than a year ago. This is according to AAA Michigan. In Metro Detroit, the average price for a gallon is $2.43, down about 9 cents. You know, airlines charged flyers $7.1 billion in fees for checking bags and changing flights last year. It's up from $6.3 billion in 2010, according to a report from the Government Accountability Office. As the amount of fees collected rise, we'll travel experts say there are ways to avoid them. Listen up. Southwest doesn't charge for check bags and Rhonda using certain credit cards can also eliminate the baggage fee. Rhonda. All right. Thank you, Maribel. It is 620 on your Monday morning and police want him behind bars. We're telling you why they're hoping that you could help find this man after a scary encounter. But first, a connection between alcohol and cancer. Why making just a small change in your drinking habits could save your life. And before we go to break, get close to your TV and check out today's Facebook friend for the day because we've got a new giveaway as well. This is Vanita Morris. She's from Detroit. She is retired and enjoys jazz music and living life in Detroit. Ah, well, we want to send you a Happy's Pizza gift certificate just for you for being our friend of the day. We'll be mailing that out to you and an invitation to everybody else. Don't forget to like the Local 4 Facebook page and click on the Friend of the Day tab if you want to be our next Friend of the Day. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. It is 624 and let's turn to good health now because apparently cutting back on your booze intake could lower your cancer risk. Experts say that cutting back on at least 33 ounces of alcohol a year might reduce deaths linked uh, related to liver, pancreatic and head and neck cancers. Also, research shows that the risk of cancer deaths increases for those over the age of 50, suggesting long term consumption of alcohol could actually worsen the risk of cancer. Brandon. All right, let's get a quick check of your weather and traffic together here. 624 weather and traffic on the fours. 68 right now with some patchy fog. Middle 80s by noon and 89 degrees feeling like low 90s, but just shy of the record. It's still going to be hot, hot again tomorrow and steamy. Finally starting to feel some relief Wednesday, Kim. All right, well, I do like the heat, so no complaining from me. But this is a look right now at your commute over on I-696 right at DeQuinder, and you can see that things are looking great in this area. Traffic volume, volumes are really starting to build, but still accident-free this morning. All right, quick check of your sports as well. The Tigers completed the home portion of the 2017 season by closing out their series with the Minnesota Twinkies. The Twins jumped out to an early lead and never looked back. They got on, uh, they go on to beat the Tigers 10 to 4, and they'll close out the season. The Tigers will on the road. Uh, they are hitting the road heading to Kansas City. In the NFL, celebrating a touchdown before you cross the goal line may not be the smartest thing to do. Steelers were in Chicago Sunday, and uh, look at this. It was a field goal attempt blocked by the Bears and then run back, and the Steelers come all the way back, and you can see the guy trying to run the ball in there for the Bears just loafing as he uh, heads to the goal line there. So they knock the ball out of bounds. There's the blocked field goal attempt and then run back. Tried to celebrate a little too early. Who's behind you? Always look out. Remember Leon Lett in the Super Bowl years ago or in the playoffs, whenever that was? Amazing stuff. Mm. Yeah, it's certainly got a feel for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you got to run all the way past the goal line before. <laughs> you even s slow down the brakes, yeah. right? Time now 626 everybody coming up next at 630 local stories for you from Farmington, Detroit and Pontiac. Plus, did you see this a fire right inside a Ford field and we're not just talking about the fiery fans <laughs> following that final call. You have to see the video and the impressive response. Yeah. We also want to keep you updated on breaking news that we're following from overnight. A woman riding her bike is hit and killed in Clinton Township. We'll have a live report from our Nick Monticelli there on the scene next. Navigate your morning. 
All right, welcome back everybody. Let's get into today's top video. It seems like there is a Guinness World Record for everything, right? Yes, literally. Uh, well, that also includes unicycling while juggling. In Vancouver, <laughs> Canada, a man juggle cycled over four miles before what? stopping, and that was enough to earn him the world record. You see this in circuses and other people doing it, but four miles, that's a long And then time. look, this guy was filming him he juggle cycling so easy. on a unicycle himself pretty impressive. I would All have right. thought at some circus this record would have been broken already, but I guess not. We probably back don't minute. have four miles of That's true. circus tenetry. <laughs> to <laughs> ten ten <laughs> Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. And we're following this breaking news from overnight. A bike ride turns into a deadly hit and run investigation. And now police are trying to find the driver who killed a woman in Clinton Township. Plus this morning, reaction to the protests across the NFL as teams make statements following the controversial comments made by President Trump. An interesting setup around the country, an area of low pressure bringing snow to the Mountain West. We have Hurricane Marie out here, but in the meantime, around both of these systems, we've got warm air near 90 degrees, near record high on your still steamy Monday. It's pretty incredible, the extreme weather patterns that have been happening seemingly everywhere else. And we have just been in this pocket of great weather the last few weeks. We have, and while I'm all about embracing fall, I can't go to the cider mill just yet. Like, <laughs> well, it can't be this warm. This weekend. No, I need, okay. As this long weekend. as the temperatures take a little bit of a dip. I, I need believe, it to be jacket weather. I believe they are. Okay. They're going to we'll dip just for you to go to the cider mill. There you go. <laughs> Some donuts and cider. Uh, we do want to let you know all Detroit Public Schools are going to be closing early today because of the extreme heat. Uh, dismissal times will vary, and that's going to be based on each child's school start time. Yes, yeah, so morning classes are on, everybody. It's the <laughs> afternoons where the kids will be let out early, and that includes sports activity, practices, and games. Those are have all been canceled for this afternoon as well. I would just want the whole day off. I, I'm, I'm sure. That's why I'm reminding kids and parents. Wake like, up. Oh, 68 <laughs> degrees. I can't go to school this morning. It's too hot. Oh, let's get over to Brandon and talk about our forecast for today, the heat wave, and when it comes to an end. Well, it's going to be another few days of very warm weather. We could have some early exits from school again tomorrow, but I think it's a great idea for those buildings without AC. We had Friday, Saturday, Sunday near record heat tied or broke records twice, and we're going to be right back at it again today. Heat and humidity 68 degrees right now. The barometer is 30.06. That's on the high side, so we have high pressure hanging on, bringing us the heat and the humidity still pours in 68 at the bus stop for the kids this morning. A little foggy, a little hazy. Watch out for that, but it won't last too long. Eight, nine o'clock. It's just haze 84 degrees at noon and 89 is the uh, forecasted temperature for today. The record is 93, so we're just shy of that, although the heat index or the feels like temperatures will be very close to that 93. Also, if you're driving right now out west into Washtenaw County, down in Monroe County here, we have less than a mile visibility also up in Port Huron. Kim, I know, has been watching this on some of her traffic cams. Not a huge problem, but some of the rural areas. Kim. That's right. We are seeing some patchy fog out there. So if you're in one of those areas that Brandon just mentioned, maybe give yourself a little bit of extra time. But the good news is, is that that's not causing any problems this morning. We are still accident free. So now we have construction to talk about over on westbound I-94 from I-75 to the lodge. One lane block there from 9 to 3. This is going to be happening all week during that same time. And then we've got nightly construction over in Novi. East and westbound I-96 from Novi Road to I-275. Only one lane open there. This is going to start up tonight at 9 p.m., wrapping up tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Keep this one in mind for the week as well. That will be ending on Friday morning at 5 a.m. And then we also want to take a look right now with our Sky 4 Chopper to see what your commute looks like. This is a look at I-94 right at I-96. Visibility in this area looking good, but it's getting busy out there, but no slowdowns to report at this time. Over to you. Kim, thank you. At 634, we're talking about this breaking news that we've been following for your story that first broke on our Clip on Detroit mobile app. A woman 
hit and killed while riding her bike in Clinton Township. And now police are trying to track down the driver responsible who left the scene. Local force Nick Monticelli joins us now live with more on the investigation right there along Metro Parkway in Clinton Township. Nick, as businesses are opening, I'm sure police are hoping surveillance video could shed some light on what type of vehicle they're even looking for. That's their hope. At the corner of 16 and Gratiot, you've got a CVS, a McLaren uh, medical building, a gas station, and even more businesses on the northwest corner. So there are, or there should be, a lot of video to go through, at least to see what kind of vehicles were in this area. Take a look at this video. This hit and run happened at 10 o'clock last night. The 911 call coming in to Clinton Township PD at 10.07. And it appears this woman in her 40s was trying to cross the road on her bike here at 16 and Grash, likely trying to cross uh, Metro Parkway when she was hit and killed. Now the driver, as we mentioned, just took off, did not stop to try to help this woman. And again, someone saw her and then called 911 for help. Now, as we said, they will be looking at security cameras. They're also going to be pouring through some evidence that was collected here at the scene. You can see her bike there right now as police were taking that away. They got evidence markers. Uh, on the road as well because there were some pieces of evidence left behind. They're also hoping that some paints may have rubbed off and hit that bike as well. A lot of different things to go through this morning to try to track down who hit and killed this woman. And I get it, accidents happen. Things like this are going to happen, especially in an area that is dark at 10 o'clock at night. But the bottom line is you can't hit somebody and then just take off. That's going to make the investigators work even harder and it's going to make the charges for you go up. If it was just an accident, it could be just that. But leaving the scene and leaving someone there to die is an entirely different story. Now, if you were at this area 10 o'clock last night and saw something suspicious, maybe saw the vehicle or saw something that just didn't seem right, please call the Clinton Township Police Department. We are live here in Clinton Township. Nick Monticelli, Local 4 News today. And hopefully one of those businesses there had this accident on security footage so we can get a description of the vehicle and possibly get it out to everyone watching yes. at home. Nick, thank you. Time now is 636. They kneeled, they linked arms, and some teams didn't even come out on the field. Yes, we are talking about the show of defiance to some comments made by President Trump over the weekend uh, that spread across the board with the NFL, Jason. That's right. NFL players, owners, owners and coaches kneeled or locked arms in unity during the national anthem at their games. The protests were in response to President Trump's comments against the practice of kneeling during the anthem, saying players that did so should be fired. However, players and coaches were not the only ones to take part. Oh, 24 year old Rico Lavelle also showed his support of the players when he got on his knees after finishing the national anthem. And if you were watching the game live Sunday on TV, you would not have seen the players uh, nor Lavelle taking a stand. The st uh, singer says he'd been thinking about kneeling for quite some time, but the president's comments forced him to act. And Trump called our players SOBs. You know, some of the greatest athletes. It just wasn't it for me. Lavelle says after the game, several Lions voiced their support of his move. Many of you took to the Local 4 Facebook page to share your thoughts. He wasn't the only singer who protested. Voice contestant Megan Lindsay took a knee after singing the national anthem during the Titans Seahawks game. So you see that playing out right here. It was a remarkable day. So let's take a look at the comments on the board here. Uh, Joy says, just do away with the national anthem at the games. Hashtag no respect. Bob says, watching sports used to be a way of putting aside life's issues for a little while, especially political ones, not so much anymore. Judy, I am so over this subject. U.S. Constitution provides them the ability of free speech and protesting as part of those liberties. No judgment here, but it's time to stop berating, bashing, demeaning, and stating that these individuals or any other individual who protests in this manner does not love their country and every freedom and liberty of choices it provides them. God bless all who stand against injustices in this country and every country. Harley, no longer Alliance fan, sad day seeing I'm all Michigander. That's going to do it for the comments. Remember, you, your voice can be heard on the Local 4 Facebook page and as Twitter as another platform as well. So back to you guys. 
Alrighty, Jason, thank you to 639 everybody. We're going to get to some stories that are making headlines all across Metro Detroit this morning. And let's take you to Farmington, also Pontiac. But first we start out right on Bell Isle. This was awful. A group of people were hit by a van on the island over the weekend. Police say that the driver was attempting to leave when that driver accidentally put the car in drive instead of reverse and the car slammed into the crowd, injuring four people. Thankfully, no one was seriously hurt. I've never seen nothing like this happen. This is a family fun day. Everybody was out here having a great time. Music playing, a nine-year-old boy's birthday party, and they just came and, and traumatized everybody. The driver was cited for reckless driving and released. Another woman was arrested for disorderly conduct. In Pontiac now, two people were shot and one is listed in critical condition. This happened around 7 p.m. Saturday, right in the area of Marshall and Lois Lane. The incident is still being investigated. And over to Farmington, police are searching for this man depicted here in this sketch that they say attacked a woman. They say that he approached the woman asking for a cigarette as she walked to her apartment complex, the Jamestown Apartments right there on Grand River in Farmington. He then grabbed her and tried to cover her mouth. The woman was able to fight back and the man fled the scene. But this is the sketch of him. He's described as heavy set, five foot eight to five foot 11 inches tall and maybe driving a dark colored compact sedan. I think he'll be easily recognizable. All right, it is 640 and still ahead one on one with Megan Kelly. We talked to the newest member of the Today Show team as she reveals her feelings on leaving Fox News, plus what she has in store for viewers of her show that debuts this morning. Plus President Trump's travel ban, the White House imposing new restrictions on who can enter the country. And here is a look at our four frenzy game of the week. Crosstown rivals Ann Arbor Pioneer and Ann Arbor Skyline will play under the lights this Thursday. Good luck to both teams. Four friends. Welcome back. It is 644 and the Trump administration announces new travel restrictions and adds three more nations, three more countries to the original list. The new limits range from visa restrictions to complete bans on Iran, Libya, Somalia, Syria and Yemen, the five predominantly Muslim countries targeted in the original executive order. Now, this new proposal adds North Korea, Venezuela and Chad to the list. The changes are set to go into effect on October 18th. Well, it was a dramatic start to Sunday's Lions matchup at Ford Field, followed by, well, an equally dramatic postgame. Well, a fire erupted right outside of the Lions locker room. It had nothing to do with the outcome of the game. Take a look. It was caught on camera. Actually, a reporter from 97.1 The Ticket recorded food catching fire right inside of a food warmer. The fire sent smoke through the tunnel at Ford Field and near the Lions locker room. Thankfully, no one was hurt and there was no significant damage, but just a fiery end to a lot of fans that were pretty fired up over that NFL rule that ended the game for us. Did you see how calm that that person who opened the fridge was? You're like, oh boy. Like, oh, it's, it's on fire. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What, what, do we, what do we do now? We like, got this. <laughs> okay. I think I would have reacted a lot more dramatically to say the least. Perhaps you thought they were making burnt ends. Possibly. Everything, everybody steaming yesterday oh, after the man. end of that game. Including the weather. Oh man, it was a hot one, no doubt about it. No relief at all through the weekend. We tied a record yesterday, broke a record Saturday, near a record today. Good Monday morning. DPS, Detroit Public uh, Schools, are letting kids out early today because of the heat. So you can check, click on Detroit for all of that information. Temperatures in the 60s. The yellow line, the bottom line, shows visibility. We do have zero visibility in Ann Arbor at 60. Two-mile visibility in Adrian at 62. Middle 60s at the bus stop this morning, so it is warm. Average high this time of year, 70. We're already there this morning, so near 90 again today. The record is 93, and we are not likely going to see that, although the heat index or the heat and humidity combined will feel like 93, but probably just shy of the record today. As we do look at fog again, driving out I-94, maybe US 23, M14 into uh, Washtenaw County. Also be careful in and around Port Huron in St. Clair County for some fog this morning.
As we get through the day, it's hazy sunshine. Any shower chances with the peak heat of the afternoon will be maybe parts of Livingston, Genesee counties seeing a flare up real quickly, but the rest of us, it's just the stifling heat. We need to be careful. This cold front finally comes in tomorrow night. It should be dry Tuesday night into Wednesday, but we'll start to feel the cool off a little bit. Not tomorrow near 90 again near record heat with the humidity again Tuesday, but Wednesday temps are down almost 10 degrees to about 80 still 10 degrees above average, so still warm, but the humidity is getting squeezed out on Wednesday. Thursday, we're in the upper 60s to low 70s. Fall returns Thursday. We do have a shower chance on Friday, but I'll tell you, I think uh, Michigan is off. Michigan State hosts a 4 p.m. game East Lansing Saturday against the Hawkeyes, and that is football weather, finally. Yeah, certainly is. All right, good morning, everyone. It's been a really quiet morning out on the roads. However, we do have one problem that we want to let you know about right now. This is over on eastbound I-96, the ramp to Southfield Freeway. That accident is blocking the shoulder. I want to show you a better view of what this scene looks like right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. As you can see here, there are three vehicles involved in this accident. People still able to get by, but something you want to be cautious of. Um, again, that is on the right shoulder, eastbound I-96 local lanes, the ramp to Southfield Freeway. Be careful there. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. Well, today is her big debut and going from Fox News to NBC News. Many have been wondering what Megan's Kelly show will be like. Local Force Kimberly Gill got a chance to sit down with Megan to get the inside scoop on what to expect. Our viewers expect to see on Monday. Monday's going to be fun. You know, Monday's going to be a great show. It's, I don't, wouldn't say it's representative of what you're going to see on Megan and Kelly today going forward because mm -hmm. it's our first day, so there's a bunch of special stuff we're doing. Um, and the, will, the way, for example, we're normally going to open up the show, we're not going to open it up that way on Monday. But anyway, we do have the cast of Will and Grace live here along with the show creators. This is the first time we'll have all of them together with the show creators talking about their cultural impact mm -hmm. and what they think they can do second time around, you know? Anyway, and a bunch of other stuff. The, the first week is gangbusters. Yeah. So, I mean, that's really different than what you did over at Fox News. How, did, how are you feeling yeah. about the, the, just the transition to doing lighter? I feel great stories. about it. <laughs> I feel great about it. Do you really? I, I just, I feel happy and I feel... I'm like I'm about to spread joy for a living, mm -hmm. you know, instead of outrage, which is what you do on cable news. Right. I just turned 40 that I really started to think hard about my professional future. Mm -hmm. I was at Fox. I was doing an afternoon show that wasn't that political, but I was in cable, which is harder edged. And I had a long conversation with my sister-in-law, Diane, my spiritual guru. And um, I said, I really... I would love to do something more uplifting. I would love to be more of a, po a positive force in this world, a force for good. And, and lo and behold, I've done it. You know, I've, I've gotten myself out of what for me was a negative environment. You know, not Fox News, right. but, but cable news sure. and political news. And now I have this great opportunity to let my professional life align with my spirit. Mm -hmm. She'll be doing this all in front of a live studio audience, and one of these seats will be filled with a very special guest. Yes. My mom is hysterical. She's going to be part of the show. Oh, that's great. She, cool. she came in, she did a test segment. She was hilarious. Um, and so you'll see her. You'll get to know her. <laughs> she, it's going to explain everything, will Kim. Will she pronounce, mispronounce words like? Absolutely, she will. <laughs> she came out just when she was here the, uh, the other day. She's like, I'm like, mommy, a little nervous. She goes, no, I feel like they finally got to me. <laughs> I can't believe it took this long for them to find me. <laughs> she is a hoot. Oh, yeah. She is a hoot. You're going to love her. And you are going to love Megyn Kelly today. It debuts today at 9 a.m. right here on Local 4. Don't miss a minute of it. All right. It is 6.51, everybody. We've got your stories to watch for coming up next. Sky Forge. Welcome back, everyone. We continue to follow breaking news from Clinton Township. A hit and run there leaves a 40 year old woman dead and police are now searching for the driver who hit her. The woman was riding a bicycle, this bicycle there on Metro Parkway, just east of Gratiot when she was hit late last night. Unfortunately, there's no description of the vehicle that hit her at this hour.
And stories to watch for today. All eyes will be on President Trump to see if he will comment any further on the national anthem protests conducted by the NFL players. More protests could take place during tonight's game between the Cowboys and the Cardinals in Arizona. New restrictions announced for the president's controversial travel ban, adding North Korea, Venezuela and Chad to the list of affected countries, ranging from visa restrictions to complete bans altogether, with the changes going into effect on October 18th. And the man charged in that high speed chase that weaved through downtown Detroit and southwest Detroit freeways heading back to court today. 22 year old Duran Sherrard is facing a long list of charges for leading police on a chase while he was suspected of shooting and killing a woman. Sherrard has not been charged in that shooting. And DPSCD, Detroit Public Schools Community District, has issued early dismissal for all students and staff today because of the near record heat wave. The district also canceling all afternoon sports and training. To find out exactly what time your child's school will close, you can head to clickondetroit.com. There uh, you can find a number of stories. Jason has a preview of what else. Yeah, if you want to buy a new car but need to stick to a budget, we are here to help. All you have to do is look for it on the automotive page on clickondetroit.com. 2017's best new cars under 30 grand. Plus, attention parents, Local 4 is looking for, for frenzy high school liaisons. See how your talented student can volunteer to share uh, photos, videos of high school sports and activities on the sports tab. Plus, the four Detroit Coney Islands you might not have heard about will want to try out. That's on our in the D page. We'll see you back here live on Facebook at 915. Right now, let's go back to Studio A. All right, Jason, thanks very much. And here's a look at Webster on the camera this morning. 69 degrees, calm wind, a little bit of patchy fog, hot and humid again today. Cold front tomorrow night into Wednesday will finally cool us off, but 89 to 90 degrees today and tomorrow near records both days. Make sure we're hydrated and staying cool, Kim. Oh, good advice, Brandon. All right, a couple problems to let you know about. We'll start with this one over on westbound I-696, just past I-94, accident blocking your right shoulder. Eastbound I-96, the ramp to Southfield Freeway, your right shoulder. And real quick, let's get a check right now with our Sky 4 chopper, northbound I-75, right at Livernoy. This one blocking your right shoulder. All right. All right. Well, get out and enjoy the day, everybody. Stay hydrated, as you mentioned. Yeah, DPS schools letting out early this afternoon because of the heat, the lack of air conditioning. Find a cool spot. Yes. Absolutely. But don't All take it movies. for granted. <laughs> right. We'll be cooling off before we know it. We'll see you Have tomorrow, day, everybody. everybody.